In this video, we're going to be talking about a real-world example of math that a lot of you would be interested in if we only had the money. That is, of course, compound interest. So here's the thing about compound interest. Typically, whenever you have money and you put it in a savings account, you earn interest. Not even just a savings account, but sometimes you put it into some kind of you know, investment that gives you a return. Now, the way this is supposed to work is that the return is regular in terms of the percent that you earn. Okay, so if you don't touch the money and you just put, say, $10,000 in an account, uh, you earn interest, and interest goes back into the account, so that the next time you earn interest, the interest is going to be based on a larger number than it was the first time, and so it's going to build and build and build, and it's going to build exponentially. Now, it's kind of a, a slow burn, if you will. It's not one of these crazy exponentials that we're used to seeing, but it will grow exponentially because the more money you have, the next time you earn interest, it's going to be on a higher amount, which means you earn more money, and so on and so on. So on. It's just a snowball effect. So for compound interest, here is this formula, that the amount that you're going to have at the end, not how much you earn, but just your final amount, is based on your principal, P, that's going to be your starting amount, times 1 plus R over N, where R is your interest rate, written as a decimal, N is the number of compoundings per year. So if something is compounded monthly, that means N is going to be 12. Uh, that's the same N right here, and then T is going to be measured in years. Now to help you understand what's going on here, this 1 means 100%. So that means of the principal that you invest, you're going to get 100% of that back plus a small amount, a small percentage added on top of that. And that percent is calculated by taking the rate divided by the number of compoundings. And it's kind of weird when you think about it. So if you were to earn interest at say 6%, but it's compounded monthly, you're not getting 6% each month. You're actually getting, let's so go to the calculator so that we can see what's going on here. If you take that 6%, 0 0.06, and divide it by 12, this is the small percent that you're going to be earning each month. So half a percent a month. You might say, well, that's kind of crummy. Oh, but here's the thing. You're going to be adding that. So that means you're going to be growing. And so when you do 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 12, that means this is the rate at which you're going to be growing by. So if you keep multiplying a number of times this, that's going to be how your amount grows. For example, if you take $20,000 times 1.005, well now it's $20,100, so it's grown. And if I multiply that times 1.005, which would be the next time that you're in interest, you've increased it the first time by 100, the second time by $100.50. And as I keep doing this, the amount by which I'm increasing is going to get higher and higher. And so this value is just going to keep growing and growing and growing. Now, sadly here, I'm not taking time to count how many times I'm hitting the equal button, so I don't know how many times I've increased. Well, with a formula, you don't have to count that, because see, where it says raised to the n times t, that's going to tell you how many total compoundings there are. So if n is the compoundings per year, times the number of years, that's going to be your power. That means that's how many times the calculator is going to keep multiplying times whatever that, that decimal is. Okay, But the thing to keep in mind is that when it's 1 plus, when you are growing, that means the value is going to get bigger and bigger. right? So we started at $20,000. We're up to 22200 And again, I don't know how many times I hit the equal, how, how many times I hit enter. Um, but yeah, so I think that's that's pretty neat. Now things get a lot more complicated if you are investing money. It's growing, but you keep investing a certain amount of money every month. Say you have transfers of $100 every month into a special account that earns money. Uh, the formula for that is a little bit more complicated and we're not going to get into that uh, for this video or this class. So sorry about that. So to give you an example of how this works, and again, you're going to need either a uh, scientific calculator or a graphing calculator in order to do this because we're not doing this by hand, I'm sorry. Most of the stuff that we've done this semester, yeah, we do it by hand. We should be able to, or at least use a four-function calculator if things get a little hairy. But for this, we need something with a little bit more oomph. Alright, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with this example. 
So suppose that you invest $30,000, because we all have $30,000 laying around, right? I mean, who doesn't? Uh, so we invest $30,000 for five years in an account in an account that earns 6% interest that is compounded uh, quarterly. All right, so here we go. You invest $30,000 for five years in an account that earns 6% interest that's compounded quarterly. Okay, now another neat little thing to think about is that the more compoundings we have in a year, the smaller the increases will be, but at the end we will have earned more money. But you can try that out for yourself. And we'll do it here too so you can see how the numbers work out. So anytime that you're doing one of these problems, you always write the formula first. That's how you can remember the formula. So the amount that you earn is your principal times 1 plus r over n raised to the nt. And again, keep in mind that this 1 plus r over n, that's 100% of your investment plus that small increment that you're going to be getting every time the uh, interest is compounded. So now we just plug in what we have. We're trying to find the final amount. We are given that we start with $30,000. And then one plus my rate, my rate is 6%, but we have to convert this to a decimal. So that's 0 0.06 divided by, now in the example that I did on the calculator, n was 12, because I said, let's do this monthly, right? But this says compounded quarterly. So that means four times a year. It's happening every three months, but quarterly. That means you're cutting things into quarters, cutting things into fourths. So we're dividing by four and then raised to the n times t. So your power is going to be n, which is four times the number of years, and that was five years. You've got a formula. We replace everything in the formula with the correct number. The tricky part, which really shouldn't be that tricky, is typing it into the calculator. Can we type it correctly? Now, the setup that I have for this calculator is with the same kind of display that you would see on a lot of those scientific calculators with a two-line display, which means you've got to be very careful about your use of parentheses. Now, before I jump into this, I want us to think about something. If I were to do simple interest, okay, now this is just a check for you to do in the back of your mind, okay? So this is not telling us what the answer is, but giving us a ballpark. All right, so here is the formula for simple interest, which says that the interest earned is your principal times your rate times your time. So for this problem, our interest, if, if, if we're doing simple interest, now keep in mind that simple interest does not have that compounding effect, okay? So this is presuming that you earn the same amount of interest every time every year. But we already saw how the, the increases get bigger and bigger. So if I work this out and I take my $30,000 times my rate, which is 0 0.06 times my time, which is five. Oh, excuse me. There we go. This tells me that I should earn about $9,000 in interest. Now we need to understand that that's on the low side because this is not compounding interest, okay? With that being said, if I'm estimating that I'm gonna earn about $9,000 in interest and I'm starting at $30,000, I expect that when I type this formula in to get an answer that's around $39,000, $40,000, something like that. So let's do that to see if we are all on the right track on the same page. So 30,000, Gotta forget, you gotta remember the extra zero. One plus 0 0.06 divided by four 
raised to the, now if I just do four times five and I say four times five like this, let's see what I get. I get 159,000 and some change. That's not right. It should have been around 39 or 40,000 dollars, right? Here's where the mistake was made. When I did my power here, I just said four times five. Now the way the calculator reads this is that it's gonna to raise to the fourth power. It's gonna do that computation and it's gonna multiply everything times five. But the multiplication of five happens in the power. So here's what we should have written. We should have written 30,000, parentheses, one plus 0 0.06 divided by four, that part was right, raised to the, use parentheses, and inside the parentheses say four times five. Now we get an answer that is more in line with our estimate from before. So the amount that I have at the end is going to be 40,000 $405 and round to the nearest penny, uh, 65 cents. So here I'm asking you to round to the nearest penny. Sometimes homework problems may say round to the nearest uh, dollar. So make sure that you read and that you respond uh, appropriately. Okay, so this is how much money I earned, but no, sorry. This is my final amount. So we could ask this question. How much interest was earned? Well, to find out how much interest was earned, you would take your final amount and you would subtract your starting value. So we started at $30,000. Our final amount was 40,000 and some change. So the difference here is going to tell us how much we earned in interest. So we earned over $10,000 in interest by investing it at 6% for five years. Okay. Now I don't expect to find any places like that around here. Most of the percent that you're going to earn in a typical savings account is gonna be pretty low. So if you wanna earn something like 6%, there are going to be natural risks involved if you're investing in something like a mutual fund, something in the stock market. So, as we all know, that can fluctuate day to day. All right, now, we did this for compounding quarterly. What if I change it up and I say, what's going to be the difference if I were to compound monthly? So if I say compound monthly, that means that I'm just changing my end value to be well, let's see what kind of difference that makes for us. So again, the formula, and write the formula every time that you need to use it. P times one plus R over N to the NT. So my final amount is going to be P, so that's $30,000 times one plus point 0, 06. Now we're dividing by 12 this time. Now, last time we were dividing by 4. We're dividing by a bigger number, so that means that the percent that I'm earning is going to be smaller, but there are more opportunities to earn money. So that's going to help us to have more money at the end. Maybe not by a whole lot, but by a little bit. Raised to the NT, so that's going to be N12. T again is 5 years. So let's go to the calculator and let's see what kind of difference that makes. So $30,000, one plus 0 0.06 divided by 12, raised to the, just like we did in the last example, open your parentheses, 12 times five. So when you think about what this power is, 12 times five is 60. So if you do something 12 times for five years, that means 60 times over the span of five years. So that means there are 60 times that we're going to be earning interest. We're not gonna be earning 6% every time, we're earning 6% divided by 12 every time. And when we hit enter, we see that our final amount is very similar to what it was the first time. So $40,000, or $40,465 
and 50 cents. So you see we earned almost $60 more by increasing from quarterly to monthly compounding. Now there is a limit to this. You may be thinking, what if I did every day? What if I did every minute? The more times you compound, the smaller this number gets, but again, you're going to be earning more and more money, but there is a limit to that. And we're going to be seeing that in a couple of videos.